Hey everybody, how's it going? My dad brought me this old pickaxe to put a new handle on it, and since I've never put a handle on a hammer or an axe of any kind, I decided just to make a knife out of it instead. Sorry dad, let's carbon check this mamma gemma. It's a go. This is going to be a cleaver, and I've been watching a channel called A Simple Little Life. Jeremy's an awesome knife maker, and we decided to each make our own cleavers of any style as long as they had black micarta handles and then we'll auction them both off for charity. So that's pretty cool. Here I've quenched it and we're going to check it and see if it's hardenable steel. So that's the area that didn't quench and you can see the files really digging in and it sounds sort of dull. And then the tip where we did harden it is uh, nice and skatey. It appears to have some sort of coating on it, so before I go too much further, let's grind as much of that off as possible. Some coatings uh, can be pretty hazardous in the forge, so we, we really want to get rid of those before we uh, heat anything up. For my cleaver, I'd uh, like to forge it all out of one piece and not break it up or add any steel to it. So I'm going to go to what amounts to silly lengths to flatten the blade area uh, and, and bring it up and, and give us more surface area to work with. And then bend that collar area up, which I'm turning sort of now in the vise. Bend that collar area up and forge weld it to that part that we flattened out and then bend it back down and uh, we'll get some sort of handle. And you guys understand this? Yeah, it's pretty harebrained, so I don't blame you if you don't. But uh, we're going to try it. So here, here you see me flattening that area out and sort of pushing it up and giving us more area to work with as far as forge welding something to that spot on the cleaver. We're going to have to drift that area back apart so we can fold it up and, and forge weld it. But enough of this. Let's uh, check in on Jeremy's progress on his cleaver. Did you guys see the super clean uh, grind lines? That was pretty slick. So believe it or not, I haven't really had time to, to make any hardy hole tools or, or buy any hardy hole tools for my new anvil. So I'm still sort of, you know, you know, jerry rigging some stuff, basically. Time for forge welding. I'm putting some borax flux on here and uh, 
We'll whip it out of the fire when it's ready and hammer it. You can tell it's ready for forge welding when it turns uh, bright yellow and or the borax is bubbling on the surface. Or my new favorite, uh, especially for the climate I'm in, is that it turns yellow and steamy looking. Seems to be a pretty good indicator you're at temperature. So we're sort of gonna we're, we're gonna separate this area here, and then cut it there, and then we'll bend it back down, and forge weld it again. And we're back where we started. We're going to have to flatten out this area so we can bend our collar back down over it. So if I'm totally honest, there's about half an hour of footage on the cutting room floor of, uh, this thing flying all over the anvil and me trying to fish it off the ground <laughs> um, as I try to get the steel bent in the right direction um, without actually knowing what I'm doing so um, it was not as easy as it looks here I'll just say that So not only are we going to forge weld it uh, back over that nubbin to straighten it out and make a handle, we're going to forge weld it to itself and close that collar area. You can see that since it's a pickaxe, it's a little bit thicker there, closer to the handle. So we're going to draw that out, thin it out, and also it'll straighten the edge for us. I'm going to try to keep that writing in there. I don't want to touch it, so I'm going to hammer below it. So it's a good sign that these forge welds are somewhat solid as I'm hammering um, on them and, and deforming the steel around them. They're staying together. plan will be to leave uh, as much of a forge finish as we can on, on this thing. Again, I don't want to grind away those markings, that, that awesome uh, five pound marking thing on the head. So um, the handle area does have to be ground flat so that, so that a handle fin uh, fits flush. But uh, we'll try to leave as much of the forge 
finish on there as we can for the rest of it. This is one beefy cleaver. So I drilled a lot of holes in there to take some weight out of the handle especially. The head of the cleaver is still quite heavy. It may not look like it's that heavy, but it's redonkulous. This is Parks 50 oil. I'm going to heat it up by putting this wrench in there. It's supposed to be around 120, 140 degrees, something like that. Depends who you talk to. So I just throw a wrench in there and feel the side of the can, and if it's hot, I'm good to go. I'm going to draw back the spine with a torch, so I'm, I'm going to uh, go beyond tempering and make it soft on the spine here. I don't want any undue stress or strain on that area where those forge welds are with such a big heavy blade, so I really want to make sure that that uh, area of steel is somewhat soft and deformable and can handle some shock. So as far as the forge welding goes, I'm not really concerned that that's going to make the knife unstable or, or the handle treacherous. There's this area here of incomplete welding. Uh, it doesn't go all the way through, um, but there's still a good half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch around it. Uh, and certainly on the other side, a full weld. So, you know, it bothers me, um, especially since the steel is so heavy it's such a heavy cleaver but what bothers me the most and what makes this piece ultimately decorative and not usable is this I made a kiridashi out of the tip um, it's not an especially awesome kiridashi so go easy um, but you can see halfway through the steel when you grind down there's these lines and they're sort of oriented perpendicular they're lines and voids and I, I heat treated before I ground this is a knife I made out of the collar, just between what's now the cleaver and that kiridashi, that area of steel. And it's the same thing, lines um, and voids. I'm again, halfway through the steel. And I, I don't know if they were there before heat treat. Um, I, I heat treated, then I ground the blades, both of those. But I suspect there's an area of bad steel in cross section there, the squiggly line. And if you grind it and look at it from the top, it leaves a mark that goes up and down the blade there. And as you change the angle of the grind, it moves on the surface when you look at it from the top. And to me, that indicates that there's just there's a layer of bad steel between two layers of good steel, essentially. At least that's how I'm that's how I'm seeing it. And, and furthermore, there's a little more evidence to support that. And this is sort of the layout of the steel that I used. The kiridashi was the spike over there on the right, and then the area just to the left of it was the knife was made out of. And the lines and voids are oriented in this direction, which is perpendicular to the blade on the kiridashi. But on the knife, they're oriented the same direction they were on the kiridashi, which is parallel to the blade, um, which shouldn't I wouldn't really think would be the case if there was an error in heat treating or forging. So I, I suspect there's some, some bad steel, and I don't know if it involves the cleaver or the handle area of the cleaver. It doesn't look like it involves the blade, um, but that is to say, ultimately, this cleaver is going to be decorative. I, I'm not going to consider it safe for use. So after the demo that you'll see on a simple little life's channel, you can go over there and see me chopping with it. It's a mean little chopper. Um, I'll take the edge off of it and whoever buys it, you're just going to have to hang it up and look at it. With that craziness on the steel, I just I don't think it's safe to use, especially since it's so heavy. So, Hey guys, I'm on the Patreon bandwagon. I've, I've just decided to do it. Um, you'll see a link below. Go check it out. If you feel like supporting the channel and you like what happens here and you learn stuff, there's going to be some extra content um, through Patreon that I have plans for. So 
Go see what that's all about. Check the link below. In the meantime, let's put some copper handle pins in here. They'll tarnish, but they look cool and they can be polished pretty easily. And since this thing is really just gonna be decorative and, and not safe to use, I'm cool with that. If you want to see me chop a 2x4 with this, head on over to Jeremy's channel. I check some edge retention uh, after some chopping. And you can see him complete his own little cleaver, which is pretty awesome. I'll put a link in the description below. I think you guys are really going to like what he's doing. All right, let's take a sneak peek at uh, Jeremy's final cleaver. Hey, thanks to Jeremy and Simple Little Life. Thanks to you guys. Check out the charity auctions for these two cleavers and have a good one.